Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart and today we're going to do an example involving position vectors. Now this example comes from chapters 2.7 to 2.9 of the book and in this example we are asked to determine a rubber band's length and direction measured from point A towards point B. Now let's look at the diagram we're given to get a little bit better of understanding of what we're asked to find. In the diagram, we have a 3D problem with an X, Y, Z coordinate system. In this problem, we see that we have a red rubber band that is stretched between point A, which is down below, down here, and point B, which is up here. And we are asked to find the length from A to B of this rubber band. We could call this vector that we've drawn a vector RAB, where it's the position vector from A to B, and we can call the length of this vector as the magnitude RAB, right? Where the vector is indicated by an arrow and the magnitude of the vector is indicated by not having an arrow over the top, right? So we can say that the, the unknown for this problem is the length vector, I mean the, the length of the vector, RAB, as well as we want to find the direction measured from A towards B. So we need to find the direction of this vector. We'll say we want to find the direction angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, the cosine angles for uh, this vector. Now, what are the knowns? What are the things that we know that's going to get us to these unknowns? Well, one thing we know is we know the position of A. So we can draw a position vector, RA, and we know that position. We're given dimensions there, right? We also know the position of point B Let's call that RB vector. So our knowns are RA and the RB vectors. And from knowing the position of point A and B, we should be able to find the director that is in between those points. So let's go about doing that. Let's go about finding it. The first thing we need to do, we need to find RA and RB. We actually need to write those out. And writing those, it all comes from looking at our diagram and identifying what is their positions on the X, Y, and Z coordinate system. Are those positions positive or negative? And then converting that information into a Cartesian vector. And we've already got the answers for RA and RB here, but let's look at the diagram and see how we came up with these position vectors. Let's start with RA. We see we have our A vector here, we want to find its Cartesian vector. We're starting from the origin, right? On the x-axis, how much does it move and does it move positively? Yes, it moves in the positive x direction by one meter, right? What about the y-axis? Is it in the y direction? For this one, the answer is no. It's zero in the y direction. It's flat on the x and z plane. Right. All right. Now let's look at the Z axis. Where does our A lie on the Z axis? It actually moves downwards in a negative direction by three meters. Right. So if we put that together, we have one meter I plus zero meters J minus three meters in the K direction. That gives us our first position vector. If we repeat that process for RB, where we can see that RB is negative in the X uh, axis, it, it moves back by two. On the Y axis, it moves out or positive by two. In the Z axis, it moves positive by three. We put that together. We find our RB vector is negative two I plus two J plus three K meters, right? 
So now we've got these two position vectors. The next step is to find the position vector that goes from point A to point B. To do that, we need to find R A to B, right? R A B. And that R A B is going to work out to be the following equation, where if we want to find the position vector uh, from A to B, so R A B, we are going to take the terms of B and minus the, the, the terms or components of A. And we're going to do that for each, for the Y, for the, for the X, for the Y, and Z components of each of these vectors. Notice the, 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 the order that, it, that the subscript here is AB, and the subtraction is B minus A. Make sure that you keep that order in mind. That the subscript on the outside, the vector from A to B, is going to be the components of B minus A. Very, very key. Otherwise, your vector is going to be end up being directed backwards. Right? So, once we've kind of figured that out, we go ahead and look at our position vectors we have. So our B, the RBX term is, is, is negative 2, minus the RAX term, which is, so, so it's minus 1. Put that together, so on and so forth, and we end up with our with our vector uh, R A B is equal to negative three i plus two j plus six k meters. All right. So now we have the the position vector from A to B. Now what we're asked to find is we're asked to find the length of that vector and its direction. So let's take this vector, and let's find the length first. The length of the vector is equal to its magnitude. And the magnitude of a vector, it can be very simply found as the square root of the squared terms of that vector. So the square root of the vector's x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. So if we were to take the x component and plug it in, the y component, plug it in, and the z component, and plug it in here and get all of that into our calculator, we'll find the length of our vector is equal to seven meters. So now we know the length of this vector. We know how long this rubber band is. All right. Now the next part of this problem is to find the direction of the vector, right? From A to B, what is the directions of this vector? Now the best uh, method we can do to find those directions is to find either the unit direction vector itself, UAB, or in this case, we want to find the direction angles, right? Let's start with finding the unit direction vector UAB. That'll be the starting point, where UAB is equal to the vector itself divided by the magnitude of the vector. So we have a Cartesian vector in the numerator, and we have a scalar value in the denominator. So we just go ahead and plug all of that out. And we now see that each of the, the terms of RAB is divided by 7, right? Now this ratio, if you, if you look at it closely, this ratio we found, you'll note that the units are gone. We're doing meters over meters, so this is now a unitless vector. And in fact, this unit direction vector does indicate the direction. So we could box this as our final answer. This is the direction, the pure direction of the vector. But often, it's easier for us to present our directions as angles. So in this example, we're going to present the cosine angles. Now these angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, can be found as the ratios of each of the components, the Rx component over R, Ry component over R, Rz component over R, right? So the ratios of the components with respect to the lengths. Well, well, these ratios for, for this cosine alpha, beta, and gamma, these are what we just found in our unit direction vector. Negative one third, I mean, I mean a negative three sevenths, uh, two, two sevenths, and six sevenths. So let's plug these ratios directly in and rearrange and solve and we'll find that alpha is equal to 115 degrees 
beta is equal to 73.4 degrees and gamma is equal to 31 degrees. So now we've, we've solved this problem. We uh, took our knowns and unknowns and identified a path forward in solving this problem, right? We wrote out the position vectors for A and B positions. And then we did the, the basic operation. The vector R A B is equal to the components of B minus A. Plug that in. And then we took that R A B vector and broke it down into its magnitude as well as to its unit direction vector and subsequent direction angles. So we broke this one down pretty well. Uh, so that's the end of this example. If you have any questions, uh, leave comments in the, in, the, in the chat room below, uh, and I'll see you in the next example video.